Good morning and welcome to this presentation with Bergs Timber. Uh, my name is Øystein Lodgaard and I'm the analyst at uh, ABG covering Bergs Timber. Now allow me to introduce Peter Nilsson, uh, CEO, and Anders Marklund, CFO. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and uh, welcome to Bergs Timber. We are going to make this presentation and I will start and then Anders will take the last part of the presentation. So please, uh, if you can change to slide number two. Uh, Bergs Timber is born out of the forest in, in the South Sweden, Southeast Sweden actually, and has been a sawmilling company for many years. It's actually a bit more than 100 years. And uh, has been very much focused on the sawmilling and with good results, but the last I would say 15 years with quite a bumpy situation and quite hard at times. And uh, during the last years, we have started to change the company into more, as we call it, further processed timber, but still with the forest products as base and, and of course, lumber. Uh, the change has been fairly big. I mean, it is the growth from five, six hundred million sake revenue up to a bit more than three billion in three, four years. So it's, of course, it has been a fast growth and it has some, we had a big need of evaluating the strategy going forward, taking the next steps. So we made quite a big job in uh, the autumn and winter with the management and board to look at what directions are we aiming. And it ended up with this strategic agenda with the main strategies of growth in the further processing. We'll come to that later. Uh, rut uh, routines and uh, increased cost reductions that we have been working hard the, the last six to 12 months to I mean, to get on top of everything and, of course, to form new follow-up systems and et cetera, et cetera. And there we have come quite far and we are more or less ready for, for the next steps. And then, of course, we, have the, we see big potential with the sustainability in this company. And as you know, we are based on, on the, I mean, on the forest raw material and we are have lots of advantages in the long run especially so we have formed a sustainability program as well which we will be back later in this presentation and then the brand and uh, there we have done taken some steps but we have more to to do on the, in that direction and then <clears throat> here it's very important to tell you that it's everything we do in our business is very much uh, based on uh, decentralized uh, organization and structure. So that also have, has impact on how we brand the company in the end. But then we had the fourth sort of area that we have been working I would say the most during the autumn, winter and, and spring, and that is to develop our current strategy. And we have sawmills in, in the Baltics, in uh, Latvia and also in Estonia. And in Latvia, we have a big mill, which is really advanced and it is very sufficient. It's delivering good results since at least 15 years. So there we have we see a potential to develop further and to, yeah, to continue to make good results. We have a smaller mill in Estonia, which is partly it is feeding our further processing company in uh, in Latvia with raw materials. So that is has also a strategic strong position in in our company going forward, but. 
time we have been evaluating the Swedish sawmilling structure and going back two years we had five sawmills and then we closed one down and uh, then we have been evaluating what to do with the rest and of course we could see some strong potential going forward but it also with the big need of investments and uh, further development and which was a possibility but at the same time quite uh, i will not call it dangerous but quite quite a big thing to do because it it would take a lot of resources investments and uh, even other resources resources management etc that we actually we would like to put this resources in to grow the further processing and then we have discussed it and we we could see that it was not ideal and maybe not even realistic to to grow the both areas in Paris going forward and uh, also again very risky and, and there I would also like to mention that it is quite a tight raw material situation and between, I would even name, Södra and Vida. And so in the end, we decided that ideally we we could actually divest these companies, these homies, which we now have made. Um, we have made the deal and actually we have also closed it. So we have, from 1st of September, we left the Swedish homies to Vida. And I will be back a little bit more with that later on. So this is the strategic agenda which uh, we are working with and of course it is with the aim to increase shareholders value that's that's what it's all about uh, then i would like to change to the next slide which is um, here you can see our uh, on the map where we are located and uh, it's Sweden, UK, uh, Estonia, and Latvia. And in total, after the uh, divesting of the Swedish Sawmills, we are 850 people, employees, with about 15 Sweden and 15 UK. So the Baltics, and especially Latvia, that's, that's a big part of our, our business as is today. If we then look at important events so far, 2020, it is of course the divestment of the Swedish sawmills, which we mentioned. And that <clears throat> gives us a completely new balance sheet and, uh, and actually a lot of room for maneuvers going forward. So the company will be in a completely different situation with a lot of opportunities for the future and then it's how we use them but that's the next steps we uh, have started woodworks by Baris, which is uh, like a startup company but with the uh, aim to sell our products in sweden which is uh, further process doors windows etc with a focus to sell it to end consumers and and projects. So it's not for the builders, merchant, DIY chains. So it's more direct sales, which is very encouraging. And we are learning a lot, but we are getting increasingly optimistic how we, this could develop. We have made an organization review. And then, of course, it's COVID-19 handling it which uh, it's on everyone's agenda whatever we are doing but uh, the main thing of course is safety health for our employees and uh, and as, as we all know it was a lot of uncertainties in the beginning of this outburst and we were traveling a lot Jan, Feb, and then everything stopped, and we have to 
We have been staying at home. Now we are staying in our office here in Vimeby. But we, we have been able to, we, have, we haven't had any major disturbances or illness in our company. But of course, we were also very unsecured about how the, the market would develop. And uh, we were really afraid of, by the lockdown in the UK, and even on other markets that we will lose a lot of business and uh, we reduce production in the beginning, yeah, especially in April and May. But everything has turned out quite differently from, at least from what we were afraid of in the beginning. So we have had a really good demand on most markets, especially in Sweden, Baltics, uh, US, even Central Europe recently. Maybe with the Japan as one exception, there has been a little bit slowdown and, and also part of North Africa, but in general, very good demand. And because of a lot of restrictions in production, sommeling production, the balance has been really in the favor of the producers. So we have had quite good good market and, and also strong uh, results recently. And it's not only for the sommelier, it, it goes for all our products actually. And then we should change into slide number five. And then to look at uh, what will happen for the rest of the year. And of course we are Still, as everyone, it's how to handle the, the COVID situation. And uh, we have concluded that we would, <laughs> the rest of the year will be more or less in, in the office and very little traveling. Of course, a bit in Sweden, etc. But we will have to control our companies in the Baltics and UK from, yeah, from. Uh, by phone, etc. But what what we are we are starting up tomorrow, and that's a, a, quite a big strategy process in our company. And that is how to take the next steps for the further processing part of uh, of the company. And just to remind you that it, it is planning for do do it yourself. It is joinery, which is stores and windows. It's house production. It is um, uh, wood protection, which is uh, treatment, fire protection, etc. And it's also garden products. It's quite a big package of, of different uh, products. And it's now how we are going to use this as an advantage on the market how we're going to invest to have organic growth and what kind of acquisitions we should target. And then, of course, new goals for the company, including financial goals, and also how to profile the company. So it, it is an exciting work and it is, of course, very good timing for, as we have changed, so much. Maybe you can say, ideally, we should have done this before we made the divestment of the Swedish Somers, but timing is not always ideal, but now this is going to be the main focus for the rest of the year. And we should be able to start to communicate the results by end of the year or beginning next year. Then, of course, things can happen in between. Uh, then we have a few slides, which is more like, yeah, I would call it examples of um, products from Bayes, woodworks, what we're doing. We are quite big into the small houses, as you can see on slide number six, to the left, stores and windows. Number seven, slide number seven, it's an one example of uh, 
our products, garden, uh, furniture and fencing and, and houses. Same on slide number eight. Uh, time is flying and uh, now I leave the slide number nine to, to Anders. Thank you. As Peter said, that sustainability is an area of most importance, of course, both for us and, and many others. And we have done quite a lot of work to, to establish a sustainability platform for Bergs. And we have done that during the winter, and uh, those have been based on the UN uh, goals. And we have uh, defined them in, in separate sections, and we also have KPIs for those as well. So the next steps for us is actually to implement them in the, in the daily business, which is uh, very important for us to, to be a, a bit of, of the daily work. And uh, one area of sustainability which I think is very important is profitability. And uh, going to the next slide, we can see that we are currently in a very good position and we are in very, very favorable market conditions for us. And uh, the numbers you are looking at, I would just make a remark that these numbers are for the remaining business or continuing business, which is the accounting word for the, for the businesses. And that means that the Swedish sawmill business has been subtracted. So these are the numbers which give you good guidance for, for the business going forward. And uh, as you see in the, in the graphs in the bottom of the page, we have had a quite a tough uh, ending of last year. Quarter two went, started uh, to be a little bit uh, lower prices in the sawmill business uh, foremost. And then quarter three and quarter four was uh, very poor performance, actually, and mostly related to this home milling business. Then we had a different uh, picture at the beginning of this year, and quarter two was actually very, very good, and the best quarter since many years ago. A clearly V-shaped recovery, uh, we can see. Uh, and also give you a little bit uh, picture of how the business is uh, divided. We see the net sales by segment that the sawmilling business is uh, now about 35% of the total business, whilst the further process is more than 60% of the business. And before the divestment of the Swedish sawmills, the, the, the relation was opposite, actually. And profit-wise, the sawmills are doing very good at the moment, but long-term, I would say that the further processing business is uh, have both higher margins and more stable margins. So going to the next slide, it's also for you to, to get a feeling of uh, the, the difference in, in the profitability between the continuing operations, also, also the, the, the remaining uh, business, and the divested Swedish uh, sawmills business. And we can clearly see that the margins in the remaining business is uh, higher than the Swedish sawmill business. And that has been for a long time, actually. So uh, to summarize, we will be a smaller com company at the moment, at least. But we will have higher margins for the remaining business than we have had previously. Mm. The volatility will be much less, and we will have a uh, very favorable balance sheet also with very low uh, net debt, and that will give us a clear platform to develop uh, the business and uh, grow also in, in the segments that we are uh, finding interesting. So by that, I think we thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, now let's go over to uh, a bit of Q&A. Uh, you stated that growth within value added processing is a key strategic focus area for you going forward. Can you, can you name some of the products areas where you see uh, the biggest potential for growth uh, organically in the years to come? 
Yeah, it's, <clears throat> if we look at wood protection, it that is a very there we have a lot of potential, and uh, we are actually we have the biggest capacity in Europe. Uh, looking at that, and there we see, I mean, fire protection. It's ordinary protection. It's uh, even coloring, and to to supply like um, a concept for for cladding for wooden houses. That, that's a big potential, and also in in garden products, doors and windows. Um, we are not that sure about how much we should grow the the house part of the company, but uh, I would say this is the main focus areas. Then, of course, we have pellets as well, and then we are looking at how, how we could develop the sales and distribution, which is, uh, there is a lot of potential. And uh, and when it comes to M and A, where do you see uh, do you see any potential uh, areas for M and A going forward? Yeah, I would say it it is in these three areas: wood protection, doors and windows, and and the garden products. That's the main. And then how we could take take steps to to improve the yeah the market position. And then again talking about logistics and how we how we distribute our products there we see quite big potential and very interesting opportunities thank you and uh, and we all know that uh, building in wood is much more environmentally friendly than other types of building materials do you see a higher demand in the market for for building with wood due to environmental reasons i think we we have we have been talking about this for 20 30 40 years now about wood as a really friendly and environmentally good and um, potential, but it just recent years, and I would say the last two, three years, the interest has, has really been increasing. And, and also a lot thanks to, uh, to development of the products like glue lamb, um, better protection, fire protection, etc. It is not possible actually to use wood in higher buildings and in in towns and cities. And mm. so thanks to a lot of development, it, we can actually now see the, the growth coming and uh, a lot of, I mean, possibilities. And now it's very much up to Bayes and to us to decide in where exactly do we want to have the growth and, and and the strength because it's such a big area so we we can't be all over the place thank you that was very interesting uh, thank you very much both uh, Peter and Anders for taking the time to present to us today and uh, thank you to all who who listened in and uh, have a nice day Thank you. Thank you.